Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Today we are breaking down the icon Linda Evangelista. Canadian born Linda Evangelista was a major player in the supermodel scene of the 90s. You cannot mention 90s models without talking about Evangelista. In addition to appearing on more than 700 magazine covers, she is widely considered to be one of the most successful and influential models of all time. Famous for being the muse of photographer Steven Mysell for a lengthy period of time and for the famous quote, we don't wake up for less than 10,000 a day, darling. Evangelista is a household name in the modeling industry. When compared to her peers, Evangelista did not branch out into other industries. She's one of the models along with Naomi Campbell who still models. After taking some time off to relax in 1998, she returned to the workforce in 2002 on a part-time basis. In 2008, she was named the greatest supermodel of all time by Fashion File viewers for her many modeling accomplishments. Evangelista has drawn praise and accolades from many of the fashion industry's elite. Philip Treacy said, Linda is the ultimate, ultimate model of the past 50 years. Karl Lagerfeld once described Evangelista as the most famous of all and the best model in the world, explaining, because she's a true model, pure and simple, she doesn't pretend to aspire to do anything else. She's just brilliant at what she does. Designer Stefano Gabbana said of Evangelista, Linda is the model. Sozani, the editor-in-chief of Vogue Italia, recounted that she would receive letters from readers concerned about what would happen to the magazine if Linda got sick, because it was all about Linda Evangelista. Her face had the most possibilities. Sozani additionally stated, for me, she is the model, not only for her beauty, but her attitude, her intelligence. In his book, Face Forward, the late makeup artist Kevin O'Coin said of Evangelista, I first worked with Linda in the early 80s and have yet to meet another model who was more involved in every aspect of her work. Her specialties were knowing what was best for her hair, makeup, styling, and lighting. And Linda was always right. It was mind boggling. Many of the unforgettable images of, his, of this haunting beauty were in great degree due to her involvement. This sentiment was echoed by fashion stylist Paul Cavaco who described Evangelista as the greatest collaborator of all time. But sadly these days, Linda and Vangelista is a recluse. It's rare to see her out and about taking photos because she went through this horrific fat freezing full sculpting procedure, which we are going to talk about in this video. And we're also going to talk about her predatory ex-husband. But before we get into all of that, of course, we're going to do some background on her as far as her childhood goes and her career. Evangelista was born to Italian parents on May 10th, 1965. Evangelista was born in St. Catharines, Ontario, the second of three children. She attended Dennis Morris Catholic High School and grew up in a working class Roman Catholic household. And at the age of 12, Evangelista enrolled in a modeling school self-improvement course where she learned about topics like poise and politeness and was encouraged to enroll in a modeling course. Evangelista got her start in local modeling when she was just a teenager. The year was 1981 and the event was the Miss Teen Niagara pageant. While she didn't end up taking home the crown, an elite model management scout noticed her. She began her career as a fashion model at the tender age of 16 when she traveled to Japan. However, an unpleasant experience involving, you know, taking her clothes off during an assignment left her wanting to give up the industry. She moved back to Canada and waited two years before trying modeling again. In 1984, after relocating from her native Canada to New York City, Evangelista began her modeling career by signing with Elite Model Management. Evangelista got her hair chopped short in 1988 at the advice of photographer Peter Lindbergh. And Linda's career was boosted by the new look, which became known as the Linda and marked the beginning of the era of the supermodel. Evangelista was one of the most well-known women in the world in the late 1980s and early 1990s. She was called the chameleon of the fashion business because of how she can adopt any look and played a pivotal role among the five supermodels. Her first major fashion magazine cover was for the November 1984 issue of L'Officiale. Subsequently, she appeared on the covers and in the pages of a variety of international publications including Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Cosmopolitan, Glamour, Mademoiselle, Elle, Marie Claire, Allure, Time, Interview, Newsweek, Rolling Stone. She appeared on a total of more than 700 covers worldwide. In 1989, 
1985, she began working with Karl Lagerfeld, the head designer of the fashion house Chanel, to whom she would become a muse. On the subject of Evangelista, Lagerfeld once uttered, there is not another model in the world as professional as she is. Evangelista became one of the first editorial models to successfully cross over into the realm of runway model, with her agent Piero Piazzi successfully booking her to walk for fashion designer Gianni Versace, for whom she became a muse. She first appeared in a Versace ad campaign in 1987. Lindbergh proposed that Evangelista cut her hair short in the fall of 1988 after seeing her put on a short wig for a picture. Evangelista's appearance at 16 fashion shows was cancelled when the haircut received a bad reception from the industry, but at the beginning of spring in 1989, Evangelista's new hairstyle was all the rage. The Linda was the name given to the cut and the Evangelista was the name given to the wig that was modeled after it. Evangelista was one of the big five models who became famous in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Most actors and musicians of the day couldn't compare to the supermodels in terms of fame. Additionally, Evangelista, Christy Turlington, and Naomi Campbell formed a trifecta known as the Trinity, the Holy Trinity of Modeling. On the cover of the January 1990 issue of British Vogue, photographed by Peter Lindbergh, were Cindy Crawford, Tajani Patitz, and Anna Ewers. According to some, the cover alone defined the supermodel age. George Michael, after seeing them on the cover of his album, decided to feature them in the music video for his song Freedom 90. Evangelista had been named one of People Magazine's 50 most beautiful people in the world that May. The phrase we don't wake up for less than 10,000 a day famously declared in an interview published in October 1990 issue of Vogue from Evangelista has since become synonymous with Evangelista and has been called the let them eat cake of the 20th century. When describing Evangelista, fashion writer Susie Menkes referred to her as the world's leading model. In a Vogue article the following month, Finally, in 1991, Evangelista starred under Lindbergh's direction in the documentary Models, the film. Evangelista was also the subject of a Paris-based episode of the MTV show House of Style. Evangelista later landed a $5 million endorsement deal with Clairol and starred in the fashion documentary Unzipped. She was also a presenter at the Miss World 1995 competition. Evangelista was on the cover of the Lindbergh's 1996 book, 10 Women. She was in the film Catwalk. She was the Vogue Taiwan and Korea cover model. Yardley of London paid her $7.75 million and she retired in 1998 and spent the next two years on the French Riviera. Anna Wintour, then editor-in-chief of Vogue, gave her the VH1 Fashion Award Lifetime Achievement Award in 1996. The city of Toronto, Ontario, honored her with a star in the Canadian Walk of Fame in June of 2003. She was voted the greatest supermodel of all time by viewers of the CBC television show Fashion File in March of 2008. At the age of 22, Evangelista met and married Marie Gérald, 15 years her senior in 1987. Gérald Marie oversaw the Paris branch of Elite Model Management in 1987. Gérald Marie is also the man labeled the Harvey W. Weinstein of the fashion business who abused his power with new and vulnerable models. When asked on a Canadian television program in 1991 if she was jealous of the young woman Marie worked with, Evangelista said, all those great faces bring profits to his company which I get to help spend. No, I'm not threatened. I achieved all I wanted to achieve, end quote. In 1993, they got divorced. Evangelista claims she had no idea that Marie had a history of sensually taking advantage, harassing, and even rape women at work before, during, and after the marriage. Also, take note that all the charges we're about to outline are ones that Gerald Marie has declined, like refuted vehemently, he denied these claims and said they never happened. However, a French official investigation into these claims is ongoing without his having been charged with any crimes. And during that time, Marie allegedly took advantage of 13 elite models reportedly targeting younger women because he thought that virgins were not photogenic. So to make you photogenic, you had to break your virginity. How creepy. Accusers also say the Frenchman would ply his victims with a daily dose of Coca-Cola. Y'all know what that mean. I can't say it for you too, but the Coke, you know, to keep them thin while engaging in the victimization of their bodies. Over 40 more women have come up to speak their stories. In 1992, while working on a picture shoot for Barney's New York, she first met actor Kyle McLaughlin, whom she later dated. The 1995 engagement ended in a divorce in 1998 for the couple. She then started dating Fabienne Barthez, a French football player. Six months into the pregnancy, she became pregnant but miscarried. The pair split up in 2000, got back together in 2001, and then ended their relationship 
married formally in 2002. Evangelista gave birth to her son, Augustine James, in October 2006. She refused to give his father's name. Evangelista, who dated Francois-Henri Pinault for four months in late 2005 and early 2006, disclosed in court documents that she had a son with him in late June 2011. Later, Pinault married Salma Hayek, and on August 1, 2011, Evangelista formally filed for a child support order in Manhattan Family Court, asking for $46,000 in monthly child support from Pinault. On May 3, 2012, a highly publicized child support trial got underway with testimony from both Pinault and Evangelista. Evangelista's lawyer asserted that Pinault had never paid for the child. And on May 7, 2012, many days into the trial, Evangelista and Pinault came to an amicable agreement. These days, it seems Evangelista only has love for her ex and his wife, Salma Hayek. Recently, Salma Hayek posted a family photo of herself out with her stepson, which is Linda Evangelista's son, to her Instagram page, and Evangelista reacted with joy, posting two black heart emojis in the comment section. It all seems to be amicable and friendly, and we love that for them. Now let's get into the cool sculpting scandal. Evangelista gave an explanation for why she has stopped working and had disappeared from the public eye in September 2021. She explained that five years earlier, she had undergone cryolipolysis, a cosmetic fat removal surgery under the name cool sculpting, in order to remove fat beneath her skin, but that this procedure had had the opposite effect, leading to the condition paradoxical adipose hyperplasia. According to People Magazine, within three months after Evangelista's treatments, she started noticing bulges at her chin, thigh, and bra area. The same areas she wanted to shrink were suddenly growing and hardening. Then they turned numb. This is a direct quote from her. She said, I tried to fix myself thinking I was doing something wrong. I began dieting and exercising more. I got to where I wasn't eating at all. I thought I was losing my mind, end quote. Finally, in June 2016, she went to her doctor. I dropped my robe for him. I was bawling and I said, I haven't eaten, I'm starving. What am I doing wrong? When he diagnosed her with paradoxical adipose hyperplasia, she says, I was like, what the hell is that? And he told me no amount of dieting and no amount of exercise was ever going to fix it end quote. Evangelista said that she had filed a lawsuit against Zeltic Aesthetics, the company that owns Cool Sculpting and is an allergen affiliate. She demanded $50 million in compensation for her suffering and lost wages. PAH is a rare side effect for those who don't know what it is and it's like, okay. And it happens to less than 1% of people who do the Cool Sculpting. She just happened to be very unlucky. And it's where the freezing process causes the affected fatty tissue to thicken and expand instead of shrinking. Patients go in to have something reduced and now it's enlarged. And the problem with PAH is that in some instances, it doesn't go away at all. So you're stuck with it for life. So no amount of liposuction would help with it either. You're just kind of like disfigured for life. Evangelista alleges that when her doctor contacted Cool Sculpting about her PAH, the company told him they wanted to make it right and offered to pay for her liposuction with a surgeon of the company's choosing, which is risky. Why the company's choosing, right? And her suit Evangelista says that on the eve of her liposuction, she was informed that Zeltic would cover the procedure only if she signed a confidentiality agreement. She refused and had the first of two full body liposuction surgeries, which she says she paid for. Following the surgery, Evangelista says she had to wear compression garments, girdles, and a chin strap for eight weeks. Otherwise, the PAH may come back, which she says it did. Even after a second liposuction in July 2017, she said it wasn't even a little bit better. The bulges are protrusions and they are hard. If I walk without a girl in a dress, I will have chafing to the point of almost bleeding because it's not like soft fat rubbing. It's like hard fat rubbing. She says her posture has also been affected because she can no longer put her arms flat along her sides. I don't think designers are going to want to dress me with that, end quote. She also told People Magazine, why do we feel the need to do these things to our bodies? I always knew I would age and I know that there are things a body goes through, but I just didn't think I would look like this, she says of the protrusions, adding that she lost her identity. I don't recognize myself physically, but I don't recognize me as a person any longer either. She, and she means Linda Evangelista supermodel, is sort of gone, end quote. So st since that was a pretty sad ending, I saved some fun stuff for 
the ending just to lighten up the mood I didn't want to end it on that because that sucks right you go from being the most beautiful face of the modeling industry modeling and then just a procedure that you think is safe you know so let's get into her diet secrets which you know I usually put those things in the beginning of the video I mean she was the most famous model ever so we want to know and her glory what did she eat <laughs> what was her favorite foods and beauty secrets right so on diets she said I think there's something to be said about keeping a really high pH level and food that help you with inflammation but it's so hard for me to say you know stick to this or whatever I really feel like deprivation creates desire when pizza comes through my house which is once a week I can resist sometimes but once in a while I have a piece so in general though just have a natural you know lots of vegetables I'm not big on fruits myself but tons of vegetables tons of grains flax hemp some coconut oil and avocados and as far as her beauty tips she said I really think one should do their makeup in front of a window because I'm sure women don't know when they go out. You can see their foundation and where it ends. I really think you can get your best results in natural light. I agree. If you have a vanity, do it in natural light, not in the bathroom. Because oftentimes in the past, I would do my makeup and then I'd go out and I'd be like, what is going on? So do it in natural light, not the fluorescent or even the dim light. I love you guys so much. Comment below. Who else would you guys like to see? Thank you for tuning in. If you like the music you're listening to, as always, the link is in the description support my brother comment below who else would you guys like to see until next time